Most people claim they can't manage anger when, we, when they are dealing with their spouse. Some people beat their wife in anger. Beat their wife, some people abuse their husband and say crazy things in anger. But the same person who can also cannot control his anger, if he gets out and sees a policeman with a gun, he becomes a gentle of The policeman is with his gun and everything and is facing him and then the anger all of a sudden. Shh. Why? How come we can't control it at all but we can control it on the road? You see, the devil says lies to people that they can't control it. You can't control it. The Bible says, be angry but sin not. The anger can come, you can suppress, you can deal with the anger and then process it. There are many marriages where most people are saints abroad and devils at home. Saints abroad and devils at home means when you are at home, you are a devil. When you get to a church or any other place, any other gathering, you are so nice. Oh, sister, 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 how are you? Praise the Lord for you. Hallelujah. And everything. But you and your spouse, you fight and call it. You have devils at home. Because most people pretend. They pretend a lot, they come out. You behave well outside. But when, when you get home, you are, you are a devil. And I share with you, I said. If you can walk a lot in your house, you can walk a lot anywhere. We began conflict solution, and this is still how to resolve conflict. Because uh, for most people, this is the area they are going to have to struggle with unless you get the right teaching. If you if you if you if you want to get married and you're already married, you know that the art of managing anger is, is important. If you have the four, verse 26. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. This scripture is very important. In other words, when you get angry, you have no reason to condemn your savior because you are angry. As long as you are here and for, for you to understand this particular series, this particular session, you know, get my tape on anger management. I did a message on anger management. Okay, how to manage anger. And we looked at, you know, we, we look at the example of, uh, of God the Father and see how, you know, he, he, God gets angry and his anger, how he praises, how he uses his anger to, for, for good things. Okay? In other words, be angry, that means as, as, as long as you are a human being and you are a normal human being, even if you are not normal, you are going to have a reason to be angry one way or the other. There will be a time when anger will come. You are going to be angry. Okay? You know the example that Richard gave now, of what happens now. Uh, is, is your, what you do with the anger that is important. <laughs> so number one, when angry, you get angry, they are, we are going to look at some of the reasons why people get angry. But then the thing is, the key thing is that as long as you are on the earth, you are going to be angry. And if you are married, you are going to have more opportunity to get angry. Okay? If you, when you, if you get married, you are going to have more opportunity to get angry. Normally, if you are, once you get married, okay, you are... The, because somebody will be on your case, uh, you have a spouse now that is that may not think the way you think, okay? And there will be issues because relationship is so it's so much it's so much work that unless God helps you to build a home, it's difficult to build a home. And in fact, I would say it's impossible to build a home. You can stay together and cohabit together and live together and all that, just like a living lover. But you really cannot enjoy relationship without God. And so, what we are looking at closely today is let's see the let's see uh, for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit explain how to deal with anger, how to process anger in our relationships. The first thing is that there are there are reasons when you talk about anger, there are reasons that there, there are things that give back to anger. There are things that will give back to anger in a relationship. Okay, especially we are looking at it now. In, from the point of view of a marriage. Now, if you are not married, you can look at it. You can be staying with somebody say, maybe you have a roommate, a fellow, a, fellow, a fellow lady like you, a fellow man like you, sharing the same together. Or maybe your colleague in the office. They will be, you are going to, this message is useful for everybody. Even though we are looking at marriage specifically today. Okay? 
Anger is very important to deal with. You have to deal with anger. You have to learn how to deal with anger. If you don't know how to deal with anger, like I, and if you did that tip I did on anger, I said you can use your anger for good things. As I said, I said anger is like electricity. Uh, it can be used to give, you know, generate uh, air conditioner to power to power this place. Uh, generate power to, to to power AC, power the light and everything, a microphone, everything, electricity. Good. The same electricity can also electrocute and kill somebody. So. It's, it's, it's okay to get angry, but how do you manage your anger is important. And uh, when, you, when, you, when I say that, it's okay to get angry. You need to know, when you get angry, you need to ask yourself, why am I angry? Because most, uh, most people who get angry, their anger is not justified. They are not justified anger. They don't have any basis. They are distorted anger. I shared that, 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 that message. I said that's what I call distorted anger. Distorted anger is when somebody is getting angry, and the reason why you are getting angry, you have no case. You don't have a case. In fact, you are actually a fool. There are many times people get angry because they are foolish. Most, I will show you, I will show you, the anger of man does not want the righteousness of God. The anger of man, most, most anger, most, most people get angry, their anger is not justified. I don't know what I for following tonight. Most people's anger, they are not justified. It's foolishness, ignorance. So we are looking at. Let's look at. Uh, let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes. No, 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 let's go to Proverbs, chapter fourteen. Be angry, but sin not. And they see this. We still go about this place. He give us prescription. Now, when anger will come, but when anger comes. Don't sin with the anger, number one. Number two, don't go to bed with the anger. Two things. We'll come down one shortly. Proverbs chapter, chapter 14. It's very important how you process anger. This thing is, this anger is a major issue in marriages. That's destroy homes. That's, some people have died because of anger. Roger the 14 verse 17. A quick tempered man acts foolishly. Huh? 14a. A, and a man of wicked intentions is hated. But look at 14a now. Huh? Sorry, 17. 14, 17 a. Hmm? a quick tempered man acts foolishly. Okay? Foolishly. But it says. A quick tempered man acts foolishly. If you get angry easily and you don't deal with it, you get you are easily angered, you are likely to be acting foolishly. And your foolishness will affect your spouse. People have taken decisions and they, they, in anger and, and they didn't know they, they when by the time they discovered it, they were in error. And to change their mind, I say I'm I'm not gonna, most people don't know they don't repent. It all depends. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes 7. We look at the scripture, then we look at, I, will, I will show you a list of some of the things that cause anger in marriage. Do not esteem your spirit to be angry. For anger rests in the bosom of fools. Do not say, why, why were the former days better than this? That's what I stand now. But you do not inquire wisely concerning this. Most people, when they get angry, they begin to regret. For anger labels you a fool. There is a foolish. See, there is a label on your head. Fool, 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 fool. Because of anger. Like I said, maybe about 80 or 90 percent of, of the anger that you find among human beings are not justified. They are foolish. It's foolishness. Foolishness. And so what is, what is anger? Anger is a strong passion. Strong passion. Emotion. Of displeasure. Strong passion. Emotion. You are responding to a displeasure. I say anger is a strong passion. As an em emotion. Emotion of displeasure. 
that is in response to other event or situation that displeases you. Events, words, situations that displeases you, that displeased. And if and that message I share on anger management, I explain this one there. I explain it there. Anger affects your lungs. Your lungs. Okay? Affects your stomach. And affects your eyes. It affects most organs of your body are affected when you're angry. See, if you stay angry for long, your eyes start getting red. It starts affecting your eyes. When you're getting angry for long, some people, some people, their nervous system is affected. Some people, they're, sh they're shaking. When they stay in anger, they're shaking. There's a they tremor. Anger. You see, and you know, the, for, people can be angry for crazy reasons. Listen now. You can be, you can be, open and while you are talking, you are, you are, you are talking, you are explaining, you are, you are talking, I'm, you, are, you ask me a question, I'm answering you. Or I ask you a question, you are answering me. And then I, I talk to you, you didn't understand what I'm saying. You say, what do you say? I say, so, so. I say, I what do you say? I say, what do you say? Are you see, the person didn't understand what you are saying. He wants to get what you are saying. Because you know, he wants to get what you are saying. I want to understand you. I'm trying to understand what you are saying. And then you get angry. They call it fly off the handle. You fly off the handle. For when you fly off the handle, you are labeled a fool. And you see, this is, you see, is, is, when you look at anger, the way most people, do, most people get angry, it shows they are baby Christians or completely unbelievers. They don't have to, they, you see, with your spiritual growth, if you grow spiritually and you become strong and you exercise your faith as a child of God, you begin to overcome rage, getting angry. You no, know they call road, road rage, road rage, road rage, road rage. Is when, when, so when you are driving, somebody just, 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 just caught you, caught you in, in the traffic. <sighs> you get angry. You drive, mm, pressure, cut him out. Mm, 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 mm. Somebody calls your father, your mother on the road. It's what they call road rage. Road rage. It is a common thing in America. And if you go to Lagos, that's the headquarters of road rage. <laughs> it was a busy one, a busy one, our wow, your father, your mother. The way we move up, park and up their shed. What are you driving? See, road rage, this is, is in their lay, when you look at them, what you see is a picture of a fool. It's a picture of a fool. And you see, the thing is that there are also many, people, many of them who go to church on Sundays, but they've never learned what we are learning here. They are just a raw material the way they are. Their flesh is left alone. Your flesh is left alone. It is very important for you to learn to manage your anger. But most people don't even know that it's a problem. They don't even know it's a problem. So you know that's it. They learn it from their parents. You see, children, that's why you are releasing children. You need to learn to teach your children how to process anger. You need to teach children how to process anger because the children will do what they see their parents do. Okay? If your, your, your daughter you grows up and see your mother, they see you as, a, as, a, as, a, as a mother, you are raging. You and your husband, pa, 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 your father, your mother. And the children will see that kind of thing. It's, they, are, they will do the same thing. You are raising them to be like that. You got, that's what you call learned behavior. Learned behavior. The children take a lot from their parents. They learn, I'm not just looking like, looking like you. They will, they will learn your ways. In fact, there's a place in the Bible that says, Do not make friends with an angry man, for you will learn his ways. Now, if you are a child and you grow up in a family that they are probably with anger, you're going to learn the ways of your parents. Come on, younger. You will never know how many people resign their office, resign their work in anger. 
just got angry, pam, pam, pam. Tear paper, resignation, pam, 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 pam. In the midst of anger, they are angry, but they, and they didn't you know, just get angry, but they sinned with the anger. When you sin with and the, the anger, is when, it's when you, you get angry on his own. Just getting angry on his own, it's not, it's not the problem now. It's what you do with the anger. When you get angry, and you begin to say things with your mouth, with the, in anger, what, 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 what happens? You, know, you, have, you start committing sin now. The emotion of anger, the passion and the emotion of anger in itself is not a sin. You don't see it, don't you? The fact that the emotion of anger came in you, you the, the, the thing is coming up in you, you have, your, your stomach is contracting, and your lungs is, is expanding, and, and you are feeling this in there, is not the problem, is what you do with it. Because the enemy is waiting on see, uh, to see how you are going to do your, how you manage your anger. He wants to enter that anger and use it against you. Use the anger against you, and use the anger against somebody else. Okay, look at it. What are some of the reasons why people get angry? Number one reason, one, 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 one of the reasons why people get angry those who are married in marriage is because the, people, the husband and wife begin to take each other for granted. When do you be able to take your spouse for granted? Usually, most anger, many angers, or some, so many angers, arise from taking somebody for granted. I expect that by now you should have known better. Most people claim they can't manage anger when, we, when they are dealing with their spouse. Some people beat their wife in anger. Beat their wife. Some people abuse their husband and say crazy things in anger. But the same person who can also cannot control his anger, if he gets out and see a policeman with a gun, he becomes gentle all of a sudden. Don't say, I can't help it. I just can't help it. That's where I am. That's where I can't help it. I'm angry. But the same person sees a policeman with a, with a AK-47 rifle. The policeman is with his gun and everything and is facing him and then the anger all of a sudden. Shh. Why? How come you can't control it at all but you can control it on the road? You see, the devil says lies to people that they can't control it. You can't control it. The Bible says be angry but sin not. The anger can come, you can suppress, you can deal with the anger and then process it. And I will go look at it shortly now. Many people, give, they give excuses for why they are where they are. You can overcome it. So, the first step is that couples take their step for granted. You see, there are people, there are many, I don't know what I've shared, I've shared with you, I said there are many marriages where most people are saints abroad and devils at home. You know what, I, you know what it means? Saints abroad and devils at home means when you are at home, you are a devil. When you get to church or any other place, any other gathering, you are so nice, oh, sister, 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 how are you? Praise the Lord for you, hallelujah, and everything. But you and your spouse, you fight and quarrel. You are devils at home. Because most people pretend. They pretend a lot. They come out. You behave well outside. But when, it, when you get home, you are, you are a devil. And I share with you, I said, if you can manage, if you can, if you can walk in love at home, if you can walk in love in your house, you can walk in love anywhere. Because where you are tested most is in your house. Where there is nowhere you can hide is your house. If you go to church, two hours, two and a half hours, we have gone. You can marry, you can marry and pretend for two and a half hours. But what happens? What happens when you when you are, when you are at home ten hours, fifteen hours, twelve hours? No to pretend. Okay. So, number one is why people get why people get angry, or why, what, what, what are the, you know, the firstly on the list is that couples take themselves for granted. Look at it. You take yourself for granted. You see, you know, when you are getting married, if, before you get married, you believe you can handle any any any, any issue, whatever happens, you handle it, I'll take care of it, and everything. Love is blind, I can't see anything. Most people, listen now, if they if they be honest with you, when they were cutting, 
they saw some trace in their spouses in the fiancé that time but they still went ahead they saw things you see when we are counseling people who want to get married we always tell them we watch out to see how how does he or she manage anger this person wants to, wants to marry you now. How does he or she manage anger? Is there some people that be, before they get married, they already saw those things there, those, those traits are there. And normally, if you cannot deal with those things before you get married, don't enter the marriage yet. yet. Still wait and let's see how you can work on it. You see, if you can't manage it now, if you get worse, then you get married. Because most people, when they are cutting, they pretend. So if you cannot, if the person is the thing that hooked him somewhere, you can't, can't even pretend, don't cut him. It's a serious matter. You need to consider it. Because before you know it, that's why some people start getting blues when they get married. The reason is because they saw some of those things there, but they ignored it. They closed their eyes because they say love is blind. It's not blind. They marry, marry you open your eyes. Okay, look at it. But we want our, our eyes to open before we get married. So that we don't even get into, into a crazy relationship. Look at it now. So number one, I said, uh, Taking each other for granted. Devils are told since abroad. Okay? Some people can pretend doing dating. But if you are not foolish, you will still see those things. Most people are foolish. And because are, the interest of getting married is so important, they want to get married, so they are no longer seeing anything wrong with that person. They are hungry for marriage, so any to job are marry. Okay? Some Truly, they were, the, the, the man or the woman was able to pretend. Just some people was just like snakes. They can stay, a snake can stay with you for six months in the house. You don't know. In the, in, the of the, in the middle of the night, he will come out, go around, eat some cockroach in your house. And then, when before it is daybreak, you go and hide under the bed. Quietly. The snake is getting bigger in your house. They won't know it. Okay? So some people some can pretend. They are very good at pretending. Huh? So, now, number two reason why many people get why, why there's anger in marriage is financial problem. Financial problem is, one, is, is, is the second reason. Now, when people are broke, they're usually very angry. And then, and then uh, you see, anger and fear, they are related. Anger and fear. When there is fear, Fear of financial problem, lack. When somebody doesn't have money, they are afraid of tomorrow, they are afraid of landlord coming to come and knock on their door. They are afraid of so that fear is usually expressed in anger. There are some people you see them, some men they rage, they are raging. Some men are raging. They see them they are, what they call they call they say they call it the girl some people, they say they are raking, they, they rake. The man they rake is raking and everything. The reason, the underlying reason why he's doing that is because the man is broke. Now you can't see it. You are trying to be nice to him and everything. Oh, no, 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 no. What he's doing that he doesn't, he cannot help himself. So the only way he can do it is to use, use that anger to cover the problem. He's expressing frustration frustration to you even though you are not the cause of the problem somebody has a financial problem he is blaming the wife you are this thing you are causing you are not causing the problem you are causing the you are causing the problem you are not the cause you are going to see it's just transferred aggression because this person is in fear and cannot is not strongly uh, not, the man is not spiritually strong enough to manage the problem and so he is expressing his rage and anger you are not a victim you are a victim of the financial problem that you didn't cause did you see that sometimes it's the wife the woman because there is not enough food no money for no money to cook, cook food for the children and everything, he didn't leave enough money for me for the children. I don't have, they don't have anything. The woman is angry and everything. No sex, nothing. I don't want to. She didn't do anything. I don't. I'm not interested and everything. There's she's nagging and everything. Get it? And then when you get angry, anger begets anger. Once you are getting angry, another person. Look at profit. Let me show you profit. Profit fifteen. It's important for you to know that 
Once you get, they are getting angry. Verse 51. A short answer turns away wrath, but a heart was tears of anger. Did you see that? A soft answer turns away wrath. But, but a harsh words, harsh words. See, anger begets anger. When you talk to me in an angry tone, what it does is to, is to anger. You see the emotion of anger start coming. You already get angry. Okay? Because of the way you speak, You are having a financial problem. Let's talk about it. Let's discuss financial problem. You are you are facing financial problem. Let's talk about it. Don't make me an object of your anger because you are broke. Because your spoil is not happy that you are broke unless you, are, you two are, you already have a fundamental problem before. Okay, if you are, if you are a family that we talk about money, not today. If you are a family that is a fundamental problem, most most couples that are that, I mean reasonable couples. Nobody wants to be broke now. They need the money. You need money, and then money. All of us need money for the children. If there's no money in the house, nobody's nobody's happy with, with, with lack. Why will you make me to pay for it? Why will you have to pay for it? The money is not there. Get it angry will not bring the money. It only was in it. So it's very important. Severe financial problem. So there are some families where everybody is working on eggshell. You know what's called eggshell? Shh, don't talk to your daddy. He's broke. <laughs> see, see the thing is that because they know that if you talk to him now, you are going to get just like somebody good, like a rich. So when he comes home, you're welcome, 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 welcome. Everybody's tiptoeing around the person. Anyway, anytime we don't get money, now we allow. You see what I'm saying now? Some is the woman. And then the woman is broke, no problem. Or maybe there's no money, there's no money in the house. So you are very careful. Don't talk to her, but anyway. How are you? Uh, that's everything. Uh, you are very careful. It's looking at you like this. Because she's looking at you, you are the cause of this financial problem. You see, the reason why many people are angry with their spouse is that they look at their spouse as their source. Not God. God is your source. It's not your spouse. God should be your source. But most people, no matter how much you teach it, they are still looking up their spouse to give them money. Even if you teach your tomorrow, teach them, they say, God is my source. God is my source. Put money. Give me money. For chop. Bring me money. Give me money. For chop. Bring me money. The pressure is still on the person. Most people are used to looking up to human beings as their source. So even if you teach it tomorrow, they are still looking at human beings as their source. But I pray that you are not going to be dollar yen in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now look at it. Personality can raise or angry or sad person. Now this one has to do with the, or the background. Like I said before, there are people who grew up in a family where they, they, they are usually withdrawn. They, are, they, they, they don't know how to manage anger. So they are taking on the personality of their parents. There are people that you hardly see them laugh. You, the, most of the time, their face is squeezed. They are ready for war. Some people they're like Pepe, Pepe. Now, that, is it, so that, is it that woman a Pepe? No, 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 Pepe. Because they, I don't, they, you don't know what they say. That, they are some neighbor. They say you know, Nera, you only say one of you. Now, nah, Pepe. You go even if you greet alone, just the way she answer you. It's a wrong, it's a bad personality. Very critical person. Ready to, ready to explode. Ready, you're looking for anything that can use to explode in the house. You come and check everywhere. Because anger, he likes to, she likes to get angry. So you're looking everywhere. What is not working here? That you can get angry about. If you don't, if there's nothing, let's fight. You know? He's an angry, he's an angry person. He wants to fight. Say good money. What is good about the money? What is good about the money? Tell me now. What is good about the money? There are people like that. And that's why if you know if you when you are getting married, you need to check those things. There are some people that some people they they do it, they, do, they think it's a joke to stay with that kind of person. And they go in, open their eyes, and enter, enter married with that kind of person. Unless God change, unless the person gets a good job where the where the word of God is comes to change the person, it's a difficult thing. Because most of most of your life you are working on eggshell. Eggshell. 
That means you are extremely careful because anything you see can be taken against you. They even ask you comment. I say, I don't have any comment. You must comment. I say, I don't have any comment. I say, you must comment. Then if you say a word, that's it, that's it, that's it. They <laughs> <laughs> take it against you. You have to ensure. They do not, they don't become what do you say that? So you see, this is personality. Some people are very, 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 they are, they are very cantankerous. That's the kind of personality they have. And that is the wrong personality. That means you can use the word of God. We look at it, you can use the word of God to change that. Anybody can change. Anybody can change. You see, the word of God is strong enough to change anybody. So there is no hopeless situation. As far as the word of God is concerned, anybody can change. Look at it. Uh, learn style of communication from family background. Like I said, yeah, they are now this family background issue has to do with how they possess anger in the family. Okay? There are families, they are, the way they process anger in their family they differs. There are families where they beat each other. When they get angry, they beat each other. Okay? If you see in a family where they shout, if you grew up in a family where they shout and you learn to shout, get away! Get away! That's where they shout. They shout there. And so if you, go, if you grew up in a family where everybody is quiet and everything, you go there, you're. That is culture shock. Because you are not you didn't grow up in that kind of family. But you know that you don't know that this person, that's how they that's how they that's how they, that's families where they do, where they fight. They do fist fight. They, it's not, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about fist fight like, like the, the way they play is fight. You know what I'm saying? What you want to play, yeah? You boss together. That's how they play. That's how they play. <laughs> See what I'm saying? That's how they play. They hold each other and squeeze it. That's the, that's the kind of background they came from. So you have to factor in that if you are there, the person wants to play with you and is punching you, I say, this is not why I'm here playing play with you. I don't, I don't know what I kind of play. I want to play. See, because he's looking at the background where <laughs> I came from. So you have to look, this is, I can't, I don't like this, I don't want it. And you have to not use the word of God to process it. To say I can work on that person to change that behavior. It's background, the background. Background is very important. And that, you know, that's all of us have issues, different issues now in our background. But the word of God is the one that can change us. Okay? When you know that this, most people, is there, they are playing and they are boxing. What is big about it? To you, it's not a big deal. To me, it's a big deal because I didn't grow up. Like, that's not the kind of play. I, I, I wasn't brought up like that. We use it a bit. Some people won't move together by playing. Why play? Even if you see that they are they playing. That's their play normally. And you, you want to call police, say, come, 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 play. come, come, It's background. That's background. Okay? People need to over, overcome, overcome that, overcome that. And then if you, if you know you want that, if you buy somebody that, that, that kind of background, two of you are from the same background, then you can be two of you can be new. It's fine. You see what I'm saying? You see? Then this one, selfishness and self-centeredness. Is very very important. Is at the center of most anger. Selfishness. Center. Most people are very well. More ninety percent of people, except those who are born again and working on the word of God, are very selfish. And uh, when I taught on this anger management last time, I'm told that if you get a, get a tip, get a tip on this one. You need to get a tip to, to, to enjoy this. Now I said I gave an example of David, David and uh, and uh, Moses. Okay? And then Jonah. Now, now David was angry over, over, the, over somebody who stole a sheep. A man, no, not somebody, somebody who came, came to town, a, 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 welfare, a welfare man came to town, and then and took it, the, one, the only lamb that somebody has and killed it and, and sold it and, and ate it. And David's anger was aroused. Why? He was so full of himself. He believes he's so much. He, he believes he's, he's such a nice person. That kind of person shouldn't even live. He said that person is even desire to die. Meanwhile, what he did was worse than what that person did. He took somebody else's only wife and killed the man, killed the husband. You didn't see that now. Killed the husband. But somebody's lamb was killed, and he said that person should die. So the thing is, he, he, the Bible says his anger was aroused. But anger was aroused because he wasn't. See, he, he was so full of himself and so self-centered. 
And I, if you, look, you get that tape, you explain it in that tape. It was so self centered that he never, he couldn't see things from another person's perspective. He wasn't looking at it, he has, he has excused himself. Most people excuse ourselves and we are judging somebody else. It's very easy to judge somebody else. Moses, God told him, go and spill the rock. He went and hit the rock in anger, in rage. He didn't manage his anger, and, he, and he, he robbed him of his promised land. He couldn't enter promised land because of that. He didn't know how to manage his anger. He, 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 was, he was robbed of, robbed of entering promised land. And then Jonah, you know the example of Jonah. Jonah wanted the old Nineveh people to die. He would, the Nineveh, they should kill all of them in Nineveh. Everybody in Nineveh should be killed. He wanted to kill all of them in Nineveh. He wanted them killed, and yet the ordinary plants, all the ordinary plants was, was, was killed, and he was angry. Okay? You know, you know I can't, I won't teach you now, just get it, get it, get it. Too. But bottom line is that most of, most of the anger is selfishness and self centeredness okay? People think same from, 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 from a selfish perspective, okay? Now, one of the reasons why people get angry also with uh, women, especially among women, is multiple births. Multiple births. You know? When they give birth to too many children within a short time, and there's no, they are not spacing it. Before this one begins to work out, you don't get around that belly. Usually, it's get them more irritable and everything. You, you are rushing the children. You rush them. It's put, it's, it puts pressure on the woman. It stresses you. Okay? So, not seeing them. You know, it's not easy. Not, not seeing children. It, you don't know how it's difficult to not see them until you start giving birth. You get what I'm saying? It's full time job. But not children. Because children, they are dependent on you. They are drawing from you. They want attention. This one wants attention. This one wants attention. This one wants attention. So before you know it, many women become irritable because of multiple births. And many, 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 if you don't space them, you don't give enough gap between children, you give birth, some, some you give birth yearly. That's something that they give by year, like like this. Uh, what is what is called? What do you call this? Uh, yeah, this. Um, what is, this rabbit? Rabbit. This rabbit. You know this rabbit? Rabbit. Eh? Rabbit. You know they give birth every every year. Rabbit. Just born like rabbit. This year they born that one. Before that one. This one. They got another one. Few months after they already pregnant. Another one. I think it's okay. I don't know, three months or three. They get a pregnant for about three months and they give birth. They can give birth. I think maybe three or four, two or three times in a year. Okay. So now you are the one being. You're not wired for that. To be producing like that, reproducing fast, 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 no space. It puts pressure on the woman. It's stressful, it makes it stressful for you. So most, most ladies are challenged with anger. The reason why they get why they get angry easily is because they didn't space these children. So they get anger, they get angry easily. They already they are like a, like a what called keg of gunpowder, ready to explode. This, this, this one is stressing her, another one is stressing her, then she's pregnant again, another one, another one, the third one is stressing her, and everything, and the other one, and this one is pregnant for, is the, the second the one that's next to it, he's not even walking, walking away yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the pressure is so much that when you now come as a husband, you're making, no, 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 She's putting the blame on you for all these all this children. You are the so that this is see the point now. You're not spacing your children affects it affects you cause a lot of anger. Okay, then some people menstrual cycle. Okay, hormones, hormonal changes, and then and then uh, uh, this is they are some people have challenge when they got married before they got married during their menstrual flow. Their menstrual flow. Some people get cranky, really cranky. Now, you shouldn't stay like that as a child of God. That's the natural thing now. It's a cause. It's a cause to go to God, to God, to God, to God, menstrual, what do you call it? Menstrual, is it trauma? What do you call it? They call it menstrual, PMS. PMS. Okay? They go through those pain and everything. They are cranky, they are depressed, they are going through this thing. What is that? I'm, I'm doing my period. You are doing your period, everybody is now, everybody in the whole house, is now everybody on the, working on the egg chair until the period goes. And it's a monthly cycle, it's a course. You have to get the word now and say, no, this thing cannot continue. We can't continue. I'm doing my, if I'm doing my strange, this, eh? let's get scripture. 
you get scripture and begin to address it, but if you excuse it, the devil will keep using it against you. If you excuse it, it's my period. No, 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 I'm getting I'm, I'm, I'm my period. So the thing is that, why should I suffer because of your period? And then, as a husband, why should I suffer because of your period? So what you do is to uh, take the word, begin to get the word of God. See now, gonna let you and your husband say, look, or your husband, or your husband, we shouldn't go through this. He puts pressure on the family. So what I would do now, let's get the word, the word of God and begin to confess scripture concerning this thing so that when the menstruation is coming, your menstrual flow is coming, begin to take authority. Don't let the enemy use it against you. So don't, don't, if you excuse it as it's, it's like, like, that's how I am. That's the problem. Okay? So use the word of God to overcome it. Then as a husband, you need to, you need to, while she's working on it, you need to dwell with him with understanding. Look at, look at, look at uh, first Peter, first Peter 3, first Peter 3, 7. You have to dwell with her with understanding. First Peter 3, 7. As she's believing God for victory, using the word of God, you are going to have to learn to be patient. Yeah, because your wife, the weaker vessel. 3, 7. Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as many heirs together of the grace of life, that our prayers may not be hindered. Listen, you see, there, and this one also affects the other ones we're talking about because now here we are. The thing, what can affect a woman most of the time, or most women, most of the time, not supposed to affect a man. You are expected to be stronger physically, number one, than your wife. Emotionally, you're supposed to be more stable. When they say weaker, weaker vessel, weaker vessel, physical and emotion, your mind. Okay? You're supposed to be stronger than your wife physically. I'm talking about when it comes to lifting weight now. You should be stronger than your wife. Ideally. That's the normal thing. Though. You also have more muscles and be able to carry things than your wife. Than your wife, than your wife cannot carry. Then emotionally, then your wife being unstable, going up and down with emotions. You should be more stable. Okay? If, for instance, a snake entered the house, snake entered the house, I don't want to say, it's a snake. Snake! 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 The man also be like that. You understand? As a man, you shouldn't respond like that. You have to deal with it, you know, there's a problem, just stay there and everything. Say, what happened? What happened? No, no problem, just stay there. <laughs> you go down, you know. You see, I'm killing snake with, with kitchen knife. I just told my wife, don't worry, there's, they're just, I just, I didn't want her to get this and say, oh, no, 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 just this, 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 this. Shot, shot the shot out away. And then I, I, I couldn't carry anything to kill the snake. I got the kitchen knife. Okay? The snake crawl under the this thing, and I use kitchen knife to, to scissors this snake like this. <laughs> See, but if I'm not stable as a as a man, I'm just if I'm a weak person, and I retire, I get this snake, say snake, hey, snake, snake. I climb this here, yeah? go, <laughs> go. You are the one that will take care of this. See you, see, you are, the, you are the, the physical defender for your wife. Physical, emotional defender. Okay? We used to have a dog those days, those days, when I, when I was children were still very young. And my, my last son was still very small. Was still, our last son was still, man, was, they were used to back him. And then this dog went crazy. Well, they were mating. They were mating. The dogs, the dogs were mating. We had a female and male dog. They were mating. And that one they became crazy. The mating was so, she just, the dog got crazy. And so they, everybody ran away. The security man that was in the house ran away and entered the, entered the, entered the gate house and locked himself there because of a dog. So now here was I have to defend my family. Because if I ran away, who would talk to me? Who would take care of me? The security man ran away. They would let the dog outside. Don't mind me, nobody can go out. 
Dog, how old is the prison? No, I don't face the dog. Carry the, they carry this in. Face the dog. Don't face me. Face the dog. Or charge me. Or charge the dog. I was able to hit him once on the head. Then I hit somewhere. Okay. Now the point is this: she is the weaker person. That's a, not weaker in spirit, but physically, I'm supposed to be stronger than my wife. When it comes to emotional turbulence, I should be more stable than my wife. You should be more stable now. See, that's why we, 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 don't, we don't encourage women to drive long distance. Drive long distance, distance. Because maybe a trailer just appear. The woman fear and can just be out of the road. But the man stands. Now sometimes they do it, we overdo it. And then crash. We face my face you. Then we kill each other. Okay? But the point I'm making is that you are expected to be stronger. To be able to take charge of your family. And when your wife is going through that emotional up and down, you should be able to stabilize her. Okay, come on. The way you are, the way you are, you are acting now, let's, let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. Let's pray about it. Let's pray about it. Okay? Because the area of emotion is a major challenge for most women. It's, your, it's in your true emotion you get depressed. You get what's called depression. Constant emotions. Thoughts. You get depressed. So if you don't address it on time, if you don't deal with your emotion on time, you will enter depression. You can, the devil can push you to a level when you become so depressed, you are unable to communicate with anybody. You come like you just be looking like a dumb and dumb. Depression. But if you are it on time, once things come in, it's coming, let's pray about it. Take authority over it. Most people don't take authority over their emotions. They take authority over their physical, if they are feeling, if they are feeling sick in their body, they can take authority over it. But when it comes to their emotions, they don't take authority. In this foolishness. Because your emotional problem in sickness is as bad as your physical problem, even worse. If you don't deal with your emotions, your emotions will end up bringing sickness to your body. Okay? So you need to deal with it. Once you start seeing signs that you are getting depressed, signs that you are so happy and cataclysms are looking more on, you need to stand against it and say, devil, you can resist you concerning my emotion. Get out in your name. You know, start again. If you don't start again, you have to resist the devil at its onset. That means at the beginning, when you start feeling some kind of cranky feelings, don't, don't play with the devil for long. Play along with the devil for long. He start carrying you from your emotional problem. You try to take you to go and your mind wander to all kinds of crazy thoughts and everything. Then you are going about a merry go round with the Satan. Take authority over your emotion early. If your man is not that kind of person who can do it, then you do it by yourself. Because it, there is no way depression and the emotional turbulence can ever work to, to work for anybody's good. It's not a good thing, it's from the devil. So you take out of you are playing with, with demons. Don't do it. But this is coming up, everything, no, no, the devil, you can't, no, not, not my mind, my mind. No, no, no. Huh? And then start jumping and start laughing. Hey, 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 praise God. And start dancing. Do something. Do some crazy things. Tell the devil, no, you can't, you can't become a prayer mind. It's important. So then, some people, because they, 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 so, some husbands are very possessive, also wives, okay? Look at it. No alliance supposed to keep friends at all. There are some people, people that you, their spouse cannot have any other person except them. Even if you are talking to someone on the phone, who is that? Who is that? Some people are so possessive. And I think it's, maybe I don't know why it's jealousy or envy. That they are so many, 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 many times it's because of low self-esteem. Some people, some, people, some people have deep fears. And because of their fear, they are afraid that their spouse will, somebody will take over their spouse or somebody or they wander somewhere. They are so possessive. And then because of that one, it begins to generate anger in marriage. Because they can't talk to anybody, anybody, anybody except you. I wish you should give them freedom to talk to somebody else. You know, we need to give them freedom. See, you, the person has chosen to marry you because he or she wants you. So there's no reason why you keep that person inside prison just because they're married to you. I keep that person inside prison. Cannot, you can't talk to any, any friend, you can't discuss anybody. No. There should be freedom to do that. That doesn't mean you cannot advise. If somebody's going with the wrong person, you can say, no, this, the way I, this is where I see this person. This person, this person doesn't choose, choose another friend. This one's not, this one's not, this one's not a good person. But to give the person room to choose. Okay? Don't you unduly possess you. The other one is she, number nine is that she overworks, overworking. People overwork, get angry easily. 
You overwork, you are stressed. If you overwork, you are stressed. That, that one, the, uh, nine and ten, uh, overwork and, and not sleep, not having enough sleep. Not having enough sleep and overworking can cause you to be angry. Okay? If you overwork and you don't sleep, you don't have enough sleep, you can get angry. More, many of us actually are no, no, not sleeping enough because of work. Or like late night and all that. People can get angry. Then people also get angry because of diet. Poor food. Some people want to have grown up from time to have grown up, they weren't, they weren't eating well. Okay? Okay, they were not eating well and all that. So they are emotionally, they are what they call short fuse. Short fuse. And they say, ah, ah. They get angry easily. They are not, they, they need to eat good food. Okay? <laughs> okay? You know somebody says, a hungry man is an angry man. Okay? Now that's not scripture. I don't, I've not seen the scripture like that. But, but usually most people are hungry, they don't, they're not very friendly. I don't know about that. Somebody is hungry, is not very, very friendly. <laughs> yeah. Most people are hungry. Now, if I, if I my place is the dog who is, who is, who is who, that, the dog with belly food. No, they play with the dog when they chop. I don't know about that. You know, dogs, dogs like to play. When a dog is well, well, well fed, they will play like this. Like this. If you are already well fed as a dog, and the other one is not eating his money, wah, wah. <laughs> because there is hunger. They cannot play with you yet. When I play with you, they can play together. The challenge is that if somebody's not eating well, he's hungry and everything, and then the tendency is to get angry easily. They respond to that hunger by getting angry. This, it's wrong to do that. But just give us some, this is the reality of what you see around hunger, poor diet, poor food. So I'm angry because they are eating only one food. They, don't, there's no, they can't eat other things. They, they can't eat meat. They can't eat other things. They can eat only one, one, one thing. Soya, 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 soya. They didn't eat chicken. Okay, so they get angry because of that one. They break the anger. Men, 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 many, 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 many men have to live with getting angry because of lack of sex. It's a major, major area of anger for many men. Not getting enough sex. The woman is nagging. Not giving enough sex to the man, to the woman, to the husband. It's a big source of anger for many homes. And yet the man can say it. Most men cannot see it. You just, all you see is anger. You cannot, you cannot see the root. And so women are so foolish, they can't, they can't understand. Why are you getting angry with me? Why, why would I get angry with you? What did I do you? What did you not do me? You see, the it cannot be said. It cannot be discussed. But under it is lack of sex. Okay? The man can't help see. Many men, like I, told, I share with you, I say most men, they are very secretive when it comes to what is in their mind. A man most of the time will keep secret inside his mind, not say anything about it. But women, when it comes to their, what is in their mind, they talk it. The man will just be quiet, not say anything. He bought it inside. You don't see anything. Why men are careless when it comes to, they can, when it comes, they, like I said, they can, a man can have sex anywhere. When it comes to physical, physical contact. But the woman wants everywhere locked, not locked, everywhere locked and everything. They want everywhere to be locked. They want physical, physical, physical one. Women are very secretive when it comes to, they want to hold their husband. They don't want anybody to know what they're doing. They want, the woman doesn't want anybody to know what they're doing. They don't want the children to hear that there's only something inside the room. But the man doesn't even care about it. Secretive, physical. When it comes to emotion, the mind, the men are more secretive in that area. They are unable to tell you what, they are, what is in their mind. You are asking the man, tell me now, talk to me. Why are you angry with me? My friend, you know why I'm angry with you. I don't know. Why would I know? I better go. He can't say it. You see, the embarrassment of saying sex. He can't say it. Even some men are they are having difficulty when they want to touch you because if you say no, you are wounded their ego. You push his hand away, touch him, push him. You keep quiet and keep it inside against you. Meanwhile, you are even trying to sleep, you didn't even know why you did it. Tomorrow morning you woke up in the morning, the man is. What is it? What is happening? Nothing. 
Are you okay? I'm okay, thanks. <laughs> you see, the, <laughs> the anger is there. You know, there is what we call implosion and explosion. Implosion is when you are angry and you didn't express it. You keep it get, get inside. It's like snake, green snake on that green grass. It's quiet there. And if I'm cooking soup, hey, do you like uh, this other one? Is this still? I don't anything. <laughs> anything. What did the most important thing is what we didn't do. You are talking about soup. I'm talking about soup. You're talking about soup. What, what is soup? Do? <laughs> so this, let's do the one the most important one. If you are a smart lady, you will leave the soup alone. And you yeah, come enter. Enter. That's a smart woman now. Not a foolish, but a foolish woman will do soup. I say, eh, make her the cook there for you. Leave the soup alone. If you are a smart woman, not a foolish woman, you will remove your dress and say, yeah, cool me. Then you see the man bouncing. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. So essentially, and the last one is, is, is people who are what's called perfectionist tendencies. There are many controlling women, controlling people. Sometimes it could be man, you may control a man. There's also controlling men, controlling women. Those who are controlling and they expect perfection. And so because they expect perfection, they get angry easily for small, small things. Small, small things that don't even matter. Gets them angry. They expect perfection. They expect to be perfect. And they are not perfect themselves. Okay? So that expectation leads to anger. The person who expects perfection gets angry because you are not perfect. You that is not perfect gets angry because the person is putting pressure on you to be perfect. You don't see that? We just look at just these are some of just, just a few of some of, some of the online online things that cause anger in relationship, interpersonal relationship. Okay, and like I said, once you are angry and you don't express it, it's not expressed. And anger is not expressed and not dealt with. It's like it's like you can't it there. It's a dangerous time bomb. It's a time bomb. It's a dangerous time bomb. It can explode any time. Some people, they walk, just, just walk and leave the marriage. Just go away. They didn't deal with it. They kept it. They didn't deal with it. It's, and we're going to look at how to process anger now, okay? We don't, if you don't deal with the anger, it will destroy. It will end up destroying. I don't know if it will end up destroying, okay? Look at Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Essentially, many, most of this anger, most of the, many of the angers as, is related to anger and pride. They're related. Okay? Anger and pride, they are <clears throat> they're related. Anger, pride, they are, they are related. First of all, you know, as I say, I'm angry. Look at, we will look at how, how, to, how to process anger now. We're processing how to hold back an anger, how to process it. How do you process it when the anger comes? Okay? All that intent. By pride comes nothing but strife. But the well advice is wisdom. Usually, the last point I make about the perfectionist thing is that most people think they are cool. Most people are deceived. Most women are deceived. I'm angry with you because you are not you are not living up to my expectation, so I, I get angry with you. I expect more from you, so I get angry with you. If you are driving my mirror, you don't drive well. I get angry because I'm angry at your driving habit. I'm judging you when you are driving. Usually it's pride. And like I said, many of the people who get angry, when I start this message this morning, this evening, I say most of the anger you see among people, they are distorted, distorted, distorted anger. They are not, they are not just... We take a look at, we can't finish this today, but let's, let's look at, yes, let's quickly look at this, at this. I will begin, we will just start the process, then we can, we can see if we can complete the next week. And look at the holding back anger. Holding back. How to hold back anger. This is a very important aspect of this teaching. You know not how, to, how to hold back anger. In other words, I said, everybody who gets angry, as long as you are here on earth, there will be reason for you to get angry. I mean, you have, it's, it's, 
Anger, but the anger, be angry but say not. Be angry but say not. So when the anger is coming, how do you, how do you process it? It will come to you. How do you process it? Now here, what we did right here, this diagram here, here. That's what we call cost stimulus. And then gap, there's a gap here, then there's effect response. Now what does it mean? This is the cause of the anger. The cause is here. This is where you get angry and for a reason. You have a reason for getting angry here. Maybe somebody, maybe your husband comes home late. Or your wife cooks bad food. The food is tasteless. And you have been hungry since morning. And there is a tasteless food. So this, this is where the thing is now. So now, what do you do when you have this? This is the reality of the problem on ground. The man is coming late. And then, what, how do you respond? You are, the man is late, coming late. You are waiting for him. He didn't come on time. And he came late. And as, because he came late, you are already angry. You can deal with it, you can deal with it by, say, by, 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 by not giving this gap. You can go from here to this place straight without even giving this gap. You, you are late. You came late again. Then you can hold your shirt. You this man. I hold your shirt. You came late to the house. I didn't process the anger. I reacted based on, my, on, the, on this, this cost stimulus. I responded like that. I didn't process it. I didn't give it any, I didn't, I didn't process the anger. I just acted out. I was angry and I sinned. Did you see that? Did you see that now? See, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, versus, listen, this now. You came home late. Huh? I have the, the, I'm getting angry here. Whereas what they call what they call self talk, self talk, self talk says, "I'm giving an excuse for you. Why? why? Maybe, maybe you had flat tire. Maybe there was a problem on the road. Could have been delayed in the office. You see, you are giving excuses on behalf of that person. You are giving this time. Give this time. Time here. This time. This time here. This gap here. Before you respond. Before you know why you're going to respond. I'm going to look at it. We're going to look at it closely, not today. But you, before, before you know how to respond, you have, first of all, how to meditate. The key thing that comes to, is to, to you is scripture. I am slow to wrath. I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart and I am slow to anger. I don't get angry easily. I have my emotion under control. I am slow to wrath. I'm so to wrath. I'm so to wrath. You are saying that before you respond. Before you begin to say things out of your mouth. In anger. Your old man comes home, there's no money. You are already thinking that by the time today you come home with money. And he comes home, Sissy doesn't have it. He doesn't have any money. Okay? He comes home, he doesn't have money. So how do you do it? So how am I going to deal with this anger now? Because now I'm already getting angry here. The anger is here. The anger is here now. How will I, now that I'm getting angry, see, you are, when you are getting angry, you start seeing there are things that you begin to notice. Your eyes change. Okay? Usually anger affects your face. Most people, when they are angry, it affects their face. So what do I do? If I know that my this the way my my ang the angry anger that's coming upon me, we allow this man to see this anger in my face, then I better go to the bathroom. You got what I'm saying? Excuse me, excuse me. Go to the bathroom. I'm so to anger number one. I'm so to anger number two. I'm so to anger number three. I have anger under control. I refuse to be angry. I have control over my emotions. I'm not subject to anger. I'm, a, I'm a subject to the Holy Spirit, and I bear all the fruits of the Spirit. I'm long suffering. So when, you, when, you, when, you have, when, you have, when you are long suffering, that means you don't get angry easily. I don't fret. I don't get angry easily. I'm not irritable. You see that? What you are saying is that you are speaking the word. As you are speaking the word, you know what's happening? The word of God begins to neutralize the response that your face is carrying. Most people, when they are angry, they look ugly. Most people, when they are angry, they look ugly. Okay? Did you hear that? 
When most people are angry, they look ugly. Your anger is, has, a, has a dangerous impact on somebody else. See, people use anger. We look at, we look at it maybe you know, today, maybe possible, maybe possible, maybe possible in the industry. We, people use anger as a form of control, a control mechanism. If I want to get the result, I get angry with you. Then you, can, you do it. Hmm? That's it. I use my anger now like two. It's like capital two. <laughs> when I want to get angry, I get angry. If you, 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 you want to get angry, you frown your face, you nag, you frown your face, what is it? And then money for leash. <laughs> so this is, you use the anger as a tool. There are many people that are using it as a tool, and they are made friends with their anger. They are made friends because it is giving them results. They are getting results with it. But it's devilish. It's a devilish thing to use it as a tool to get results. Because all that I do now, you are using that anger to control somebody else. The person is responding to that anger. You are is acting based on what you are doing because he, he, he or she wants peace. Because he or she wants peace, he gives you what you want. So they can get peace. So what you are doing like, is like you're a prostitute. You use it to get your way. Okay? You are using it as a tool. So see, first of all, you have to repent. Because that's, that's evil. You have to repent of that. Then once the anger comes in, before you respond, don't be quick to respond. When you are getting angry, you know that you are getting angry. You know it yourself, you are getting angry. Start talking to yourself. Start getting involved with what we call self-talk. Self-talk. But before you do that one, like I said, you need to first of all talk to God. Okay? Father, this thing is coming again. Anger. I thank God because I have given me victory over anger in the name of Jesus Christ. So I have my anger under control. I, I access the help of the Holy Ghost, the greater one that is my inside. I access it, His help in the name of Jesus Christ. So what you are doing, you are calling for a higher power than you to help you to overcome it. Then you now analyze the problem. Well, let's analyze the problem. Okay, so the soup is, is tasteless. So what? Talk to yourself. So what? This woman cooks soup is tasteless. Maybe she hasn't been working with these children since morning. You are giving excuses on their behalf. That's why she forgot to put salt. You are giving excuses on their behalf. See, because the reason is that the reason is because your peace, the peace of your home, is superior to any other thing you are going to chase. The peace of the family, getting making sure the family is in peace is very important. So what you do, you now have to do what we what what we did. Let's call a meeting. Pray. When you finish prayer, before you can deal with this, you are, that means you have taken some time on your own to deal with this before you respond. You have to be slow to respond them, slow to get it and responding in anger, because your anger cannot go work God's righteousness. You know, you need to know that one. See, let's look at this. Let's see the scripture now. James 1. This one, 120. Look at it. You know, be conscious of this one. Be, that when, you are, when this thing is coming against you, this is, a, is an enemy. This is an enemy. It's an enemy. It's coming against you now. James 120. So, for the love of man does not produce the righteousness of God. You see that? The anger of man. This is very... This scripture, you don't know it. This, your anger will not produce God righteousness. Your anger will only, if you don't deal with this anger, your anger will ruin you. It will ruin you. It will ruin your marriage. It will ruin everybody around you. The reason, and what we are doing is this. Hear me. If you allow it, if you excuse the anger and you are justifying it, then you are, it's going to end up ruining you. But if you don't justify it and know that this is an enemy, this anger, look, that I'm having against my spouse or against somebody that's close to me, is an enemy. So I'm standing against it. Because the Bible says the anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. So there is no way this anger can work for God's righteousness. There is no way this anger can work God's righteousness out of this matter. 
God, the reason why people get angry is because they think they are, but not get, getting angry, they think that, get, getting angry, yeah, I would express myself. I would express myself. Don't express yourself like that. Because if you know who God righteous is out, you, you see, is I will, we are not trying to show you now. You see, when you are when you have control over your anger, the Bible says you are better. As, you are, you are, when you don't have, when you don't have control over your anger, you are like like a city without walls, a city that a city that doesn't have any covering. You are a defenseless person. When you have no control over your anger, you are defenseless. That means the enemy can attack you with sickness. He can mess you up and everything. In the middle of rage, anything can happen to you. The people who have died got angry in rage and just stormed and died on the spot. They don't know how to process, process the anger. This person has got angry for what? And died. Is it really worth it to die because of anger? So you've got the anger of man can never walk God's righteousness. If you know that within your heart, and you know that this anger is, see, the many reasons, many reasons why people remain the same problem over and over for many years is because they can't, they don't accept that it's a problem. If I'm giving excuse my problem, that no problem, I can't get angry. What's the what's what bad about it? Once you start excusing it, you're in trouble. You don't excuse it. It's not justified. I'm not justified. So you learn to hold it back. Hold it back. Give this gap. Give it time before you express it. By the time you start talking, you can now apply the sandwich approach. That's all we can take in this edition of Ego Christian Voice of Victory. Victory is yours. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are not out of message. I hope I for a time. Man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, what we need to do is this: that you can't enjoy victory unless you are saved. You cannot walk in the victory unless you are saved. So we want you to get born again. Man. How do you get born again? Get born again by believing in your heart. I confess you to my Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I die for you. I die for you. Man. Say, dear God. Dear God, I believe. I believe. I confess. I confess. Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God. Is the Son of God that died for me. That died for me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Come into my heart now. Come into my heart now. Right now. Right now. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. My life. My life belongs to Jesus. Belongs to Jesus. Right now. Right now. You should have been born again as simple as that. Amen. And the next thing you need to seek your body. Don't want to wear. Amen. By the stripes of the Lord Jesus, I pronounce you healed and made whole. Amen. That's the can't say again. He has already given the command. He has, he has, he has to leave you. He has to leave your body. Amen. So now act in faith by standing up and doing what you're going to do. Act in faith. Praise God. It's already done. You're already here. Believe God. If God can, God, God can fail. You, you need, don't fail because God can fail. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now here we are. If you are not born, again, if, you are, if, you are, if you are if you are not uh, if you don't have a good church to attend. Ask God to show you life ministry. There are good churches in the city. And I don't care why you're watching us from there are good churches. My, my, my friends are those who lead to the life ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. See you next time. Bye-bye. The Great Commission to make disciples of